Well, the mics are back on, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and I'm having a good time because I'm doing what I do every day, and that is talk to entrepreneurs. And uh, I do that when I'm on the radio show, and I do that when I'm not on the radio show because I have a management consulting firm, Mage LLC. So, and I'm here with one of my favorite co-hosts, the one, the only, John Dustin. Jeff, happy to be back, and this is going to be a great show. Thank you. I didn't know we were coordinating today on the dress code, but uh, I'm glad you're... Yeah, I did no tie for you, and I did the light. I like the no tie. I like the check shirt. You're quite dapper today. <laughs> so, uh, our next guest, someone I guess uh, you were looking forward to seeing, Corey Bailey, Director of Business Development, New England Construction. Yeah, thanks for having me today, guys. I'm, I'm excited to be here and excited to talk about our company. Um, been around for 34 years. We're a general contractor. Uh, our office is located in East Providence, but we pretty much do work throughout New England in a lot of different uh, sectors. We, we've done a lot of retail work. We've done a lot of office work, um, ground up, fit out, tenant improvement work. Um, really, you know, a lot of different projects in a lot of different spaces. Not residential, though, correct? Not residential. We'll do multifamily, um, which some people considered to be residential. Apartment building. Yeah, apartments, condos, um, projects like that, but not single family. What, what size jobs are you doing, Corey? Yeah, so I, I think um, that's, a, that's a really important question to ask at GC. Uh, for us, we, we do projects, uh, I think our niche is anywhere from about a million dollars up to around $20 million. Uh, although, for the right clients, we'll do smaller, and, and uh, if we have opportunities, I think we can handle bigger. But I think that's our, our range. So, you know, why New England construction? Yeah, so I, you guys, we touched on this a little bit earlier just in conversation. I have a unique background, um, having been a college football coach for 18 years. But I really spent about six months trying to figure out where I wanted to go and what, did I, what I want to do with this next phase of my life. And culture was a really important piece to me. And, and I fell in love with New England construction. They're a family-owned business. Uh, they treat their employees really well. Um, we like to say it's a, a small, smaller company with big company capabilities, and I have a real opportunity to, I think, affect the culture and, and, and the bottom line with New England Construction. And, and would it be fair to say you did have a little bit of a construction-oriented family? Yeah, so when you, when you asked me about... Mind of uh, fact. Yeah. <laughs> when you asked me about the residential piece, I grew up, my dad's a developer. Um, and I was the guy that carried the shovel in the trash bucket as a kid pretty much from when I, when I could walk uh, up until I was smart enough in college to not want to do that anymore. <laughs> so I, I do have some of that constructability piece and, and um, I grew up around that for you know, all those years. And Jeff would probably tell you from his uh, consulting engagements, a lot of life is just kind of built on experiences even if they're a little different in transitioning, but bringing some similar skill sets with you from job to job. Talk about some of the coaching aspects and, and what you're doing now with the prospecting and the recruiting similarities. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, as I went through that interview process, um, that was a huge piece of, of why I think I ended up having this opportunity. As a college football coach, uh, it's all about relationships, 100%. With recruiting, with managing your players, with dealing with your staff, that's what it is. and, and um, it's also, you know, qualifying who you who you pursue as a college football coach, making sure you're not wasting time recruiting guys that you, you have no chance at getting. Uh, in the business world, uh, what I've learned quickly here in week 11 is it's the same thing. It's about relationships. It's about qualifying. Who's a good fit for New England Construction? Those are the guys I want to spend time with. Uh, and, and that's really what it's become. It's, it, you know, I joke it's, it's kind of been a little bit of a vacation for me. Uh, you know, in terms of the hours I worked as a coach, uh, I've, I'm finding ways to try to get even close to that in this business world, and it, it hasn't happened. So it's been it's been fun. Yeah, New England Construction. They use in you know relationships the same subcontractors generally, and you'll see a lot of that similarity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, one of the things that really makes us unique is our 34 year history. And, and as you guys know. Everyone wants construction right now, and that market's really it's tight. It is. It is. And, and I think our relationship with subs allows us to um, have really good pricing because the subs have a history with us, and they know that 
we're going to be reliable and, and we're going to pay them on time. Uh, so that's been a real advantage for us because we do have a, an established network of subs that we can go to on these jobs. Jeff, with a long list of construction companies, one of the things that sets some construction companies apart is being bonded by a surety company, which is a right. big part of the agreement. Mm -hmm. Is New England? We are. Yeah, we are bonded. Um, you know, everyone has a differing range, but we are bonded and, and um, we're able to cover some, some jobs that require that. So I always say, like to ask this question. Let's go in the way back machine. Let's go through your career, how you evolved to to the point where you're at New England Construction so people understand you. They like to know the backgrounds of people. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a local guy. I'm a, a Massachusetts guy. Grew up in Rentham and I went to Zavarian. Uh, I played football at Fordham. Uh, was an economics major. Thought I wanted to be a stockbroker and, and had some opportunities to do that uh, through internships and quickly realized that wasn't me. Um, I was fortunate in that my college playing career uh, led, for, led to an opportunity to play in the NFL. I was with the Giants for a little bit, played over in NFL Europe. And then um, I didn't have enough, of, I wasn't good enough to stay in the NFL for very long, uh, but I loved the sport and I loved the relationship piece of the sport. So I've, I've been a college football coach for 18 years. Had the chance to be the head coach at Assumption College for nine years. Wow. Um, I was the youngest head coach in the country, college head coach in the country at the age of 27. And uh, I joke about it, but I think there's truth to it. I think I got the job because no one else wanted it um, <laughs> at the time. John would have taken it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we were able to build something pretty special there. And, and uh, then I went to Coastal Carolina University. Did you stop there. Did you get coaching to get coached? Um, you or know did what? you just sort of go in and just try to figure it out? Well, I've had some great mentors uh, along the way um, that were coaches that, that really shaped who I am today. And I leaned on those guys. Uh, but segue into Coastal Carolina, you want to talk about someone that was a successful businessman that went into coaching, um, or actually was a coach that went into business and then um, became a coach again. I, I went to Coastal Carolina to learn from Joe Moglia, um, who did just that. Um, he has a book, Fourth and Gold, Jeff, that is amazing. It's a story of how he begged to get a Wall Street job after being a coach and then went back. Yeah, and he's now literally a billionaire. He ended right. up becoming the CEO of TD Ameritrade, uh, and he's still the chairman of the board. Uh, at TD Ameritrade. So I, I lean on him right now uh, in making this transition. Uh, so I was at Coastal for six years. That was a great story. I'm glad I asked the question. Yeah, yeah. So um, now here I am. And you learned probably about budgeting from him, time management. Yeah. Well, how to get to goals, goal setting and how to get there. Yeah, and his big thing is thinking outside of the box. How do you do that. things how do you do things differently than everybody <laughs> That's else? This one. Every you know, you know, you know, when you're when you're doing it the sheep way or the textbook way, everybody's doing it the textbook way. Right. So you're all crowding into the same category in the same process. Right. In a positive way, I always say when the crowd's going left, Jeff goes right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Coach Moore would probably would, like it. might have been just insulting me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I, I do. I, I'm not a fan of standardized thinking. I, you know, standardization is what you know. It's all you know. Most people do because they have to do things for 85 percent of the population. Right. I think if you're going to do breakout thinking, you don't do standardized thinking. You don't do standardized tests. I agree. You get outside the box. Yeah. Right. So, what are you bringing to the entrepreneurs that you know if they're deciding to build or do a build out or a rehab? When's a good time? What, what should they look for? What gets you passionate? Yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, for us, it's once again finding out what the, who the right fit for us is. And we like to deal with, we're, we're good people, so we like to deal with good people. Um, we're able to get out in front of projects and help them budget what they're doing um, before they may actually do that so they can get a really good understanding of what costs are going to look like. Um, so that, that kind of, that, we like to get in early on the project because... Uh, we think we can truly impact their bottom line as they go through those projects and we can work with them to hit numbers and, and make things work and, and really become a consultant for them as opposed to just another contractor. You don't want to just bid on the job, you want to add value as that would... Yeah, and we want to work side by side with them and um, you know try to make things work. Well, we've been speaking with Corey Bailey, uh, Director of Business Development and Wayland Construction with John Dustin from JED Insurance. Uh, Corey, if somebody wants to find you, 
find New England Construction? How would they do that? Yeah, so they can find us online, um, neconstruction.com, the letter N, the letter E, construction.com. And my email address is uh, cbailey at neconstruction.com. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on all the social media. You may see me as Coach Corey Bailey on that, uh, but that's me. <laughs> Great. So reach out, and, and I'd love to have a conversation. And we know you're going to join all of our networks as well, so we can all stay connected with you. Absolutely. Great. And uh, thanks for being on the show. This is Radio Entrepreneurs.